This podcast is brought to you from Grantwood AEA, an educational service agency that supports school districts in eastern Iowa with a focus on equity, excellence, and efficiency in education for all children. Welcome to episode 58 of the EdTech Takeout, the podcast that serves up bite-sized technology tips for teachers. My name is Jonathan Wiley, and I'm joined as always... <laughs> okay, then. By Mindy Carney. Do you feel like we're like spending an excessive amount of time together this month? This month, I s- yeah. have seen you more than I usually do. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. All right. So this month, the reason we've seen each other so much is because we are doing a four-part series for the month of February because our digital learning team has taken Digital Learning Day one step further to Digital Learning Month. So each week this month, we are um, highlighting a specific C, and this week we're highlighting critical thinking. Um, If you don't know, Digital Learning Day is February 28th. You can register your event. There is a Twitter handle you can follow, um, at official DL Day, and also some hashtags, hashtag DL Day. Um, And we are using the hashtag as well, DLGWAA, which we don't normally use, but we're using it this month. So you can definitely follow along with us for all of our ideas throughout the entire month of February, centered around all four C's. Got it all out. <laughs> yeah, you did. So let's start with the way we like to start, yeah, which news and is follow up. news and follow up. I see on here you have polar vortex follow up. Well, yeah, I know. Are we, we still in the polar vortex? I think it's passed it's, and yeah, it's gone right? east a bit more. Yeah. So, but I just felt like, and all, since we talked about it and all the delays and things we had, yeah. it would be fun to share a story from one of our local teachers yeah. who was featured on the news um, for using Seesaw to communicate oh, um, with um, her um. students yeah. during the polar vortex. Yeah. So uh, this is Crystal Manos, who is at the North Lynn School District. Yeah. And uh, she didn't like put like formal lessons or anything on there, but right. she did some follow up activities and fun things for her kids. So like they talked about the human body in class. And so she would just leave a little video on Seesaw for the kids that said, hey, draw around your hand and, and make some bones with like um, Q-tips, right? Q-tips, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes she'll say, read a book or sometimes it's like build a fort. And they had to do those things, take a video of it, post it back to Seesaw so that she right. could see them. Yeah. So fun way to use communication tools uh, in the yeah. classroom when you're not at school. And I'm sure we're not the only ones in the country that have had a lot of snow days yeah, recently. Right. Yeah, yeah. Especially our friends over in the north and to the east of us, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, but, um, right. Yeah, my um, daughter's teacher did a really great job of this too. And she each week uses ThingLink um, for their listen to reading. And so, because they do daily five there, and um, she posted that. Because I mean, we went like a whole week without school for the most part. Like we had one day we had of one school, day, like a week. half day or something yeah. like that. And um, did a really nice job. Because I know that was, I mean, Technically, she wasn't on the clock, but still, Mm -hmm. you know, pulled all of those resources together. And it's just a really great way to reach out to kids and um, give your parents some sanity. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have extra activities and things for your kids on those days, as you and I know too well. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God, I love my kids. But okay. Um, Next up as well was, and I think I saw that we have two Eric Kurtz nuggets. I've, you know, like I said, been back on the Twitters lately. Mm -hmm. I kind of enjoyed it. I feel like, yeah, it was good to take a little break because when I get back on, I'm like, oh, there's actually stuff on here I want to look at. I don't know if that's snarky, probably. Anyway. Um, so um, Eric Kurtz passed this on that Gmail's getting a, Did Gmail have a right click before? I mean, like if you right yes. click right now, it's got nothing there. It's like it's a couple archive, of things. right? Yes, it's not much. Yeah. So um, archive mark is red and, and okay. delete and delete. All right. Yeah. So um, Gmail is getting a right click update makeover, um, and it, if you right if you right click on it, it gives you all of your options all of the normal options that you would have, which is kind of nice. Yeah, you can reply, reply all, forward, archive, delete, mark is red or unread. Mute. Snooze, <laughs> move to, mute. label, mute. <laughs> I don't Who, ever use the mute button, do you? I feel like I'm going to miss something. No, I didn't know about that, but now I can think of at least one person <laughs> I'd like to mute. So Hey, is it me? Next thing on our list is uh, apparently Chrome OS is getting PDF annotation tool. Yeah, Mindy, tell from, me more. Also from Eric Kurtz, right? I don't know. I um, 
just saw that he had shared this on the Twitters as well, that you're going to be able to annotate using Chrome Chrome flags, right? Chrome flags PDF annotations. Well, I think the thing is, work? at the moment, it's in the developer channel right. of Chrome OS. So, in order to enable it, you, you have, to, be, have to, you turn have to turn some. Somebody. You have to turn flags oh. on. That's how that works in the oh, developer channel. Okay. Yeah, certain features are hidden behind flags, and you enable the flag at your own risk, and you'll mm. get a warning saying, you know, this is not a fully baked product yet. Fully but, baked. Ooh, I like that term. Okay, so interesting. I guess two things. Uh, came to my mind one it's not like a full release yet it's yeah probably coming mm -hmm. and if it does great um other thought i had was that hopefully it doesn't encourage too much more digital worksheet right i was gonna creation. say that too. yeah, I yeah. Agree. and mm -hmm. i mean i know your chromebooks are now touch screen and you can use styluses yeah. and things with yep. them but i don't know think about some creative ways of using those annotations or different ways to annotate things and yeah use those skills yeah, I'm interested in that, too, because, like you, I wonder, how are we using those? Are we just circling answers on a worksheet? Or, um, But I was, yeah, I, yeah, just be thoughtful of how you're using it. Because even if you use, like, a PDF of, like, a graphic organizer of some sort, I mean, using an annotation tool on top of it is not ideal still, right? I mean, but it's still a great tool. Uh, next on the list here, I threw this in because on the last episode, we hey talked about collaboration. I did not see this. And um, this is about a school district yeah. that is a big proponent of Microsoft Education Edition. Mm -hmm. Actually, this district, mm -hmm. Roanoke, Roanoke, I don't know. Roanoke. Roanoke. Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke. Gosh. I've never heard of that before. I apologize, okay. mm -hmm. Virginia. Roanoke <laughs> Public Schools have been using Microsoft Education Edition and his district's among the top 10 users in the world. Wow. And they have been using it in a way to encourage... 14,000 students. Yes. Holy smokes. They've been using it to encourage their use of the four Cs. Yeah. Um, they've been supporting teachers with PD and support and yeah. they've noticed that teacher collaboration has skyrocketed. Huh. Kindergartners are coding and students are excited about learning. He says it even helps hit the fifth C that they have in Virginia, citizenship. Oh. Yeah? I dig that fifth C. I can handle that one. So students yeah. are collaborating to construct pyramids in Minecraft as they study ancient Egypt. They're building historically important buildings as they research Cuba and Greece. In a Jamestown settlement uh, module in Minecraft, they're building a settlement based on that colony. Mm -hmm. So... All kinds of great examples of that. And I thought that's not a tool that we mentioned in our collaboration episode. No, I know. So, I kind of felt like Minecraft died out because of the expense of it. Like, I was super excited about Minecraft. And then, it was you know, it's a fairly expensive thing to take on. So it's fun to see and hear that people are using it still out there. Yep. Certainly it. hasn't died out in Roanoke. Roanoke, Virginia. Yes. There you go. Okay. You get a gold star for that one today. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next up. Oh, geez. Here we go. Remove.bg. Yeah, it, it's our it's favorite. Like the tool of the month. Yeah, it won't go away. Yeah, I signed up. No, right. I signed up for their newsletter and oh, I got cool. an email recently of a feature update. And now when you remove the background from your image, mm -hmm. they will give you the option to upload oh. an image to put behind your background. One last step, and then, right? Yeah, one last yeah. step. Because I mean, mm -hmm. we, before you copy and paste it or you download it and then you bring it into like slides or something else. Yeah. But now you can just upload your background image and boom, done. Boom. <laughs> so the, I think the disadvantage is perhaps that you, you can't like move the people around or resize them and oh. stuff like you could in other things so yeah. whatever size the people are and whatever position they're sure. in they're in that position yeah but if that works for yeah. the background you've got great wow yeah they're getting a lot of traction people are super excited about remove.bg what's mm -hmm. the bg stand for i i mean if you were to know. guess bg to... means background oh i was thinking like big graphic <laughs> <laughs> no okay background's probably right no that's that makes a lot more sense what is this skype's background blurring feature will hide a multitude of sins 
Tell me more. It's one of those teasing headlines, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that uh, You're wondering what that means? Yeah. So inside of Skype now, there is a new feature on desktops and laptops running the latest version where it will blur your background. Mm. It looks, it uses AI to look for your head and your yeah. arms and things yeah. and decides that everything else is background and blurs it out. You know, oh. everybody's a fan of that, you know, portrait mode thing on their yeah. phones now. So yeah. um, you can now have it on your video calls. And this article says, you know, it will hide all that laundry you left <laughs> hanging around <laughs> the questionable wall art or the words, I hate this project on the oh, whiteboard behind that's you. That's funny. Yeah. So um, there's a small disclaimer down there from Microsoft at the bottom that says, we do our best to make sure that your background is always blurred, but we cannot guarantee that your background will always be blurred. So nice. Yeah, but yeah, I thought that was a fun, interesting yeah, thing interesting. just to throw like in there. If you are a Skype user, yeah, you hover over the video button and you will see an option to blur your background. Well, and for those mystery Skypers out there that might have things on their walls or windows that you could see out. That is a I great mean, connection could help there. Add yes. the clues, right? Yes. So you could blur out any identifying, I don't know. Clues. Clues, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. All right, up next, main course. Today we are, as we had mentioned earlier, talking about critical thinking, third C of the month. So let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. I think this is a good one because it's one of those things that can be a little bit hard to pin down in terms yeah, of what, sure. what actually is critical thinking and, yeah. and, and what that looks like in the classroom. But I think it's one of those things that are really important because when we're thinking about the employability of our students or the skills we're giving them as they move into the workforce, there's a lot of problems to solve yeah, out there, right. whether they be big global things or whether they be smaller local things or things that are just like specific to whatever company that you work with. If you are a good critical thinker, I think that is a very highly sought after skill today. Yeah. And I think a lot of times as digital learning consultants, when we um, kind of dabble into critical thinking, a lot of times the first thing that hops into our mind is coding, obviously. Um, and there are so many great resources, and we probably sound like broken records, but so many great resources out there for coding and surprisingly free, right? So a lot of times these days where, I mean, we're starting to talk about, well, this is a paid service and that's a paid service and it becomes more frustrating for teachers and frustrating for us as well. But there are so many great free coding resources out there. And when you get into coding, it's not just about critical thinking. It ties all of the four C's together. That's what's so amazing about coding, I think, is it kind of covers all four of those C's. So once again, some of those great tools out there, Scratch, with the Scratch community, which we talked about during um, the collaboration episode last week. Yes, we did. Free. Code.org. Yes. Free. And not just free for the week of code. Code.org, right. there's stuff there yeah. all year round that you yeah. can go and get resources. They have a whole curriculum for K-12 now, I yeah, believe, that right. you can follow and go through. Yeah, um, and I think that's one of the little known things about code.org that we keep telling people. It's not just our code resources. It's for your whole entire year. There is a plethora of resources. Good word, Mindy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they have like a teacher dashboard where yeah. you can track the progress of all your students and, mm -hmm. and all that good and stuff. And some unplugged so. epi um, lessons, too, because yes. a lot of times coding can bring a little anxiety to teachers who are like, well, I don't code, but there's so many unplugged or and I they're all critical thinking. Yeah. Or I don't yeah. have, I'm not one-to-one -one. Yeah, and right. you don't need to be one-to-one -to, -one no, to absolutely teach not. your kids how to code. And that's where the collaboration comes in too. Partner coding. Yeah. I also like the everyone can code curriculum from Apple, yeah. which technically is free, but will require you to have, have an Apple device. Apple devices. Yes. Sure. <laughs> they, they partner with some app developers for like K2 type of stuff. And then when you get to like 3.5, 3.6, you're using playgrounds, um, Swift playgrounds yeah. on iPads. And then they take you through into middle school and high school where you can even dabble in things like Xcode for making iOS and Mac apps. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, there's resources and ideas out there, but coding is definitely like probably the first thing I think of when I think of critical thinking skills and applying digital learning yeah. to that too. Yeah, and we do a lot of work too with Makey Makey, which works hand in hand with Scratch. Um, 
Amber and I do a lot of learning around that. And it's kind of a nice way for um, students to be able to see the physical part of their coding. Um, How would you describe a Makey Makey if ooh, somebody yeah. hasn't seen they or don't used one before? Is. So um, Makey Makey is an extension of your keyboard. Okay. Okay. So like something you would plug into you, a laptop or a yes. Chromebook or yeah. something like that. So you plug it into your computer and it has, um, it's like I said, an extension of your keyboard that is your up, down, left, right, space bar, um, click. And then on the back, and a lot of people don't know this, on the back there are more inputs. So right. it's like B, A, S, W, I don't know all Some the keyboard letters. keyboard keys. There's yeah. keyboard keys as well. So all of those um, keys then become a way to instigate different code that you have written. But the Makey Makey is also um, built around circuitry. So you have to be able to understand how um, circuits work and conductivity. And it's just, it kind of opens up a whole different way of not just writing the code, but actually creating something that will work with that code and interact with that code yeah how does that is that yeah and i think even whether you use it with code or not there's definitely some critical thinking involved in terms of how why does this work or why does this not work or you know why is it doing this i Mm -hmm. mean like you guys had one out the other day can i say what that was or not yeah yeah yeah. no it's not top secret you guys Mm -hmm. had like one of those uh Big pianos, yeah. like from the from the big movie when Tom Hanks is dancing up and down on, mm-hmm. and you created that out of uh, like a tarp and some yeah. tin foil. Well, is we had right? um, what's actually called HVAC tape, which I didn't know was called HVAC okay. tape until just yesterday. Like but it's aluminum foil work? tape. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, and so highly conductive, obviously, and um, so we were playing the piano with our feet. We put that tape on the bottom of our socks, and yeah. Interesting. Played it, yeah. yeah. But I think you bring up an interesting point too. Is a lot of times when we talk about Mickey Mickey with teachers, a lot of times you want to start with, um, like the um, banana piano. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about students first understanding how that works and the conductivity amongst with water and investigating whether or not like holding hands if we're conductive ourselves and playing with those kinds of things and then being able to take that knowledge and extend it outwards from there. So once again, lots of collaboration, lots of critical thinking, creativity, all of those four C's all wrapped up. And we run a Makey Makey class at Grant Wood, don't we? Yeah, have you got one coming up? We have one in April. One in April, okay. Ninth? I don't, uh, eighth, eighth, ninth. Is that a Makey Makey trainer class? Is that what that is? It's or? not a trainer class. No. It's just a Makey Makey class. So okay. um, it costs $25. And because we are a Makey Makey, I don't know what we're called, certified partner. Partner, yeah. We um, hold that class for free, um, but it's $25 and you get a Makey Makey, which is usually, I think, 40 maybe. Um, so yeah, you get the Makey Makey for $25 and get a workshop day which is always fun. I think it's Amber and I's probably favorite day. Um, it's very hands-on. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not like a stand and deliver no. content type uh-uh. of thing. It's, yeah, we just toss them in. We're like, you're going to be uncomfortable all day. Yes. Yeah. Lots of exploration yeah. and experimentation. Yes. And critical thinking. I know, all of the things. Yes. All of the things. Okay. So the other place my brain goes to for critical thinking yeah. is uh, PBL. Right. And so I was looking, my, my go-to place for this is the Buck Institute uh, yeah. because they have so many great resources and they're kind of like the seminal place to go to. And I, I went back there again just to research a little bit for the podcast and I found out that they have a new, they've launched a new site, I think this month actually. Really? Yeah, February 6th. It's called PBL Works. They've kind of rebranded um all the resources and things that they had and put them into one place, which is, you know, it's, I guess it's a good name for it, PBL Works. And, you know, so um, they have all the resources and things that you might need to get started with PBL, which mm-hmm. is project-based learning. Right. So one of the resources I found on there that I'll maybe try and link to in the show notes is eight ways to get started with project-based learning. If you've yes. not done yep. this before, I think PBL definitely... F- 
fosters critical thinking, mm-hmm. but it's usually like a group um, a group work scenario that mm-hmm. definitely is going to involve collaboration between kids and mm-hmm. communication and some creativity too because they have to come out and produce some end product at the end of it and, and, and show what that looks like. So there's things like um, they have a couple of books they recommend that you can nice. get started by yeah. reading. They have checklists for um, what a good PBL project should have. They have 60 gold standard PBL project ideas. So if nice. you're thinking, what does a PBL project even look like? Yeah. Once you register and log up for their site, they've got 60 examples of, you know, really high quality PBL projects mm-hmm. that are aligned to the common core in NGSS. Mm-hmm. They also have a large collection of videos of um, what PBL looks like, which I think oh, is an interesting good modeling, thing. Because yeah, so you can, yep. I think when we've done our blended learning stuff in the past with some teachers, it's like, okay, so in theory that sounds good, but what I can't picture like? in my head what that looks like. And yeah. when, you, when somebody shows you a video of what blended learning looks like in the classroom, you get, oh, you think, oh, okay, so that, that makes sense. I can see how that works now. So right. they have uh, seven to 10 minute videos um, that just go through the span of a whole project at different grade levels, Mm K-12 in math, chemistry, history, ELA, all kinds of stuff. So you can take a look at those too. So Yeah. That reminds me, and I'm sure I've talked about this before, is that all of our Grantwood AEA teachers also have a free account for Define STEM because uh, Grantwood has purchased that for our teachers. And um, Define STEM is much like what you're describing. Um, There are all kinds of lessons K through 12. You can filter um, by grade levels. You can filter by standards. And all of those have um, some learning modules in there. They call them learning objects, I should say. Um, Videos, different um, websites you can go to. All of that stuff is built in. But it's And then the projects, if you um, have a hard time coming up with what would an artifact look like or what should this project look like in the end, there's probably like six or seven um, kind of end tasks to um, finish up that project that you can choose from. If you're a little bit more comfortable, you can allow your students to choose from those different um, projects if they'd like to. Or if you're just getting started, and you're like, I want all of my students to kind of make the same thing because I'm still trying to figure this out. It's all editable as well. And you can share it out with a link. Um, for younger students, you could project it up like on your um, smart board and go through it bit by bit. Um, there's also some the ability for it to all be translated, which is super nice um, because it's got the Google Translate feature, not only through the Chrome extension, of course, but also built into the site as well. Um, Has audio directions for younger students, and it's a really great place to start. And our team is more than willing. So if you're a Grantwood AEA listener, please reach out to us um, because we're really excited about this and, and would love to share it with you. Yeah, I think one of the things I like most about Define STEM is is that fact that like you said that you can edit the project right it will give you starters like hey you have your kids read this or watch this video Mm -hmm. and you might be like oh i know a better video for that i saw this one great one on youtube so you take that video out and you put your own video in or you're like i don't think we have time to do all this and then you just cut stuff out that you don't need and i believe it's also got like google classroom integration is that right so that Mm -hmm. once you've got your project edited and ready to go you can hit a button and it will send it straight to your Google Classroom for right. all your kids. They click on the link, and then they see the student view of, yeah. of that project. So, Which is really nice, too, because it does, um, like I had mentioned about those resources, there is some differentiation within there. So um, the reading resources that go with those projects are all Lexile leveled. So um, one of the things I always struggled with when I was in the classroom was I wanted my kids to kind of all be learning about Um, let's say like koalas or something, right? And I wanted them to be able to work together, but I had some students who were reading at one level and some other students that are reading at a much higher level. And But I wanted them to feel like they could converse with one another and talk about it. And finding those leveled resources for all of the different things that are going on in your classroom can be pretty tricky. Um, And that's all built in. So you could differentiate those lessons and toss them out to different kids. And everybody's kind of feeling like a community working on the same thing, but uh, working at some of their, their own level too. So Yep. So free for Grantwood area yep. schools. Yep. You can access it at definestem.com if yep. you are not one of our school districts and I'm sure they will happily talk to you <laughs> about happily let you purchase how you it. could yeah. use that for your PBL projects. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
So what else you got, Mindy? Um, so I, uh, I loved teaching math. And so when we were, I was kind of prepping for this episode, I went down the math rabbit hole. And I think I mentioned this before, um, in one of our earlier episodes that Janet Green, one of our math consultants, was in talking to our team. And she brought up this whole um, three-act tasks, which I am um, super intrigued about. And so a three-act task is actually about students um, kind of creating their own problem just by either hearing a little story or watching a little video. And then they start asking questions about the video or about the story, and they kind of build their own problem based on a question that they want to know. Um, so I have linked here a, some, um, I suppose, learning resources for teachers who are interested in this three-act task, but also started looking then like, well, what if we wanted to share these videos and you wanted to have different students working on um, different tasks and the power of it, I think, is all of the students working together. Um, but uh, there is someone that I started following on Twitter. His name is Graham Fletcher. He has an amazing blog, and um, he has a whole page that is um, like a Google Sheet of some sort and has um, videos, math videos that just give like a little like teaser, uh, and they're sorted by math standard, oh, by yeah grade level cool. so um really great place to start because that can i think probably be a little bit overwhelming like well where do i find a math video out and do i have to create these own my own math videos now to get kids excited um so he has is a great resource and i started following him on twitter and have i mean found all kinds of things so from him then i also found this hashtag called public math which made me super excited because um so if you are on Twitter, hashtag public math, there's also a website, public math, public dash math.org, and we'll link it in the show notes. Um, so what's happening is people started by um, tweeting math photos. So they might see patterns in the real world or something that would um, bring about a wondering of some sort. But now what they've done, and this is, I think, just um, open January 6th, it looks like, They've created this iOS sticker pack, so you can download. I don't know. I've never even. I I didn't even know this was a thing, but you can download iMessage stickers. iMessage stickers. Mm -hmm. Who else has these? Like, what am I missing out Lots on? Lots of people these? have those okay. now. There's kind of like a little app store just for iMessage. Oh, okay. Sticker well, packs. that now we know what I'll be doing today. Sticker packs. Okay, sticker yeah. packs. So. Um, this was new to me. I'm like, what is going on here? So they have their own sticker pack um, that you can put into your iMessages, and they're all math questions. I love that. So you could put a little you know, sticker on that says, what does this make you think about? Or anyway, and then people are tweeting out those pictures. Um, so even just for a math starter, if you're looking for something and you're like, I need something, this, I'm not ready, you know, I didn't get a math picture or whatever, um, a great way to start conversations in your classroom just by using that Twitter hashtag. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's as simple as, you know, he has an example here on, on his blog where he just took a picture of the hallway. Yeah. And he says, what repeats? Yeah. And you can be looking at the pattern on the carpet. You could be looking at all the recycling bins that go up and down the hall. You could be looking at the cubicle walls. Mm -hmm. You could be looking at some of the posters. Right. There's lots of things that repeat there. And it's almost like it takes me back to the last one that you shared from Janet, which is the which one doesn't belong. Yeah. There's if you take the right picture, there's more than one right answer there. Mm -hmm. And people, the kids are going to find things that you don't think about initially, yeah. probably. Right. Maybe they're looking at the ceiling tiles or something yeah. and you didn't think about the ceiling tiles, but right. lots of different ways and lots of good questions like, what did you notice? What did you wonder? How many? Um, what repeats? And the other thing that I thought was really neat is the collaboration that's going on amongst all of those educators out there that just want to provide these critical thinking activities for their um, students. And so that's why I thought it was neat, too. It's like all of these people working together to help each other out or um, help kids think about things differently or wonder about different things. So math yeah. is math is back. I love math. You love math. I do love math. Awesome. Yeah.
All right, on to my favorite part of the show. It's tech nuggets, mini sized. Mini nuggets. Mini nuggets. I I feel like if you went to like a fast food place and you only got two nuggets, Mm -hmm. you'd be a little disappointed. I hate chicken nuggets. It's maybe like (laughs) it's like a a kid's meal. Yes. Sometimes you get get two chicken strips or something. You get three chicken nuggets though, don't you, in the kid's meal? Yeah, that's true. I don't know. So we got a couple of nuggets for you. Okay. Do you want to go first? Sure. I'll go first. So um, I'm going to start by saying that Kelly Warrington... I hope I'm saying that right. Is it Warrington? You would agree, right? Totally made my day um, last week because she, we gave her a shout out. Was it the last episode? Is I, I don't so. know. They're all starting to run together, to be honest. Um, gave her a shout out for sharing um, that she listened to that tech takeout, and we got a picture of her because she listened to the episode on her walk, and she sent a picture because she heard her name and was super excited. So that's fun. However, then I started following Kelly on Twitter. I'm on the Twitters, people. You are. I'm back yep. on the Twitters. Okay, Follow so Mindy. she shared um, this app that I had not heard of before, and it's called Novel Effect. And I'm like, huh, I need a tech nugget. So what is this Novel Effect? So I download it, take a look at it. This um, app, like I thought, was an amazing idea because there is a Novel Effect library of, I would say, pretty well-known um, books. There are books in the app that you can read. Um, and what happens is it creates this ambiance as you read. So it plays background music as you read. And um, I looked at their website and they said that it will listen to your voice somehow and play the background music at the right time hmm. in the book. Interesting. So um, I was reading some of the built-in ones, um, which are like older work. So like um, Peter Cottontail or The Tale of Peter Rabbit, whatever. Um, and as I was reading, like when I was like Mopsy, Flopsy, and Cottontail, it makes like this little, um, yeah, it, it's like the background, like right. the little sounds or whatever. I was super intrigued by this. So there are a ton of other books in there, but they are not actually in the app. They're more for you to hit play. And it will it's ambiance music for that specific book. But I'm assuming because you don't want to purchase the right to all of those books or whatever. Um, they are just books that you can pull. But there is a ton in there. I mean, more than you would expect from a free app. So it's completely free. There's probably 20 built-in books that you can just read straight from the app. Um, but like I said, a ton of other ones that, um, you know, that you could read, push play and read it. And it gives you little sound effects as you go. Super fun. I got five words for you. Okay. As seen on Shark Tank. It was on Shark Tank? Apparently. But it's free. I've got another five words for you. Okay. Free for a limited time. Oh, no. I missed that. Sorry. Oh, God. But get it while it's get free. Get it while it's free, folks. Yeah. Maybe they'll it's always gonna... have a free component. Maybe. I, well, think they, like... I would assume those built-in books will always be free because those are like past copyright, whatever exactly. that is. Exactly. Some of those yeah. classic texts. I'm yeah. sure they're going to move into more popular things, whether they yeah. do things like Harry Potter or something. Yeah. I mean, they're going to need to pay licensing fees for that sort of yeah, stuff so right. those will probably come at a cost but yeah i like that yeah it's fun i think it really adds a new dimension to reading especially yeah. maybe for some more reluctant readers i think my yeah. son would like that kind yeah. of extra I mean, stimulus of yes. yeah, yeah, right. for reluctant readers yeah. to get them thinking about okay what's the next sound going to be or yeah. just to keep them clued in and listening to the words yeah. and listening to the sounds as well yeah so there you go good All one right. thanks kelly so my tech nugget came courtesy of Catelyn Tucker. I saw this on her blog. She was talking about, she, she talks about blended learning a lot and different yeah. ways to manage blended learning in the classroom. And she came across this app that I thought was worth sharing. Okay, It's called Classroom Q. And Classroom Q is an interesting idea, I think. Okay. It's just one of those tools that is fairly unique in terms of I don't know of anything else that does this so if you know something then let me know Um, but it's a way to help manage classroom questions so the way it works is the teacher hits the start button to start a new session and they get a class code they give that class code to the kids who log in on the website with their name and they put the class code in and whenever the students need help they click the button that says assistance required 
So, you know, I remember when I was teaching in the classroom, sometimes, you know, when kids get stuck on something or they need help, they'll put their hand up. And then and they, they stop, right? Exactly. <laughs> they do nothing else <laughs> sure. until you come and see them. Right. And as a teacher, you're, you're helping somebody and then you look up again and suddenly there's five hands up and you're sure. like, wait, I, I don't know who, yeah. you, who had their hand up first or mm-hmm. second. Right. And what it does is it cues the kids in order for who needs help and what order they requested help. Mm-hmm. And so if you're a teacher and you're working with a small group of kids and, you know, there's always that do not disturb me unless it's blood yeah. bar Ask for three broken before bones. me. Yes. Yeah. And then, but when you do get that time to go up and go around people, you pick up your cell phone or whatever and you're like, okay, I'm going to go see Mindy first. Yeah. Then I'll go see Amber. And then you go and you, so it is free ish, ish, <laughs> um, Classroom size, unlimited. Number of students in the queue at any given time is five on the free plan. Sure. Personally, I don't know if I want too many more than five at one time. I don't want 27 kids on the assistance queue and have to grow, because I wouldn't have time to get around and see them all probably. But you get five kids in the queue for free at any one time. Uh, The ability to see students who have joined your class session is into the pro. Um, plan mm. as is a max and unlimited number of students uh, live updates of how many times each student has added their name to the queue is also a pro feature <laughs> and downloading all the data afterwards is a pro feature but mm. the pro account is twenty dollars a year yeah. which isn't terrible I mean, if you really get in i mean if it really becomes a useful tool so if you terrible. try this and your kids Padlet. like it yep. and it works mm. well in terms of you know the management of how you do things in your class and how you get around and see all the kids and in what order you see them then twenty dollars a year is not a terrible thing mm-hmm. and they also have school plans as well so so maybe it's just your a name queue can you put your question in there too like to nope. see what other kids are asking. It's just mm-hmm. a Q. Okay. As like a Q E U E. Yeah, no, I get what the word Q means. But also Q I, for question, I would think. It's got like a yes, double meaning right. on there. So classroom Q. Mm. Their mission is to create a classroom where asking for help is easier and more organized than ever before. Mm. Created by a teacher for teachers. By teachers for teachers. Classroomq.com. Okay. I like it. Well, that's it for today. I'm at Team Carney on Twitter, and Jonathan is at Jonathan Wiley. Our team account is at D-L-G-W-A-E-A, and you can use our hashtag EdTechTakeout to tag the show. If you prefer, you can send us an email to podcast at GWAA.org. We have one more left in this series, don't we? Our one last more. one is creativity. creativity. It'll be a fun one. I think that will be a fun one. So that will be next week. Mm-hmm. Until then. This has been the EdTech Takeout. We hope it hit the spot. For more information on today's episode, please visit dlgwaea.org slash podcast. It's called class... <clears throat> it's called it's class... Called- <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> It's Do called- you ever watch Friends? No. Have you ever watched Friends? In the Friends? last 10 years, I don't think. Oh. No. Well, so Ra- Ross always, his voice kind of squeaks like that. And if you ever watch the bloopers, it's super funny because they're always making fun of him because he'll say something and he'll have his voice to like cut out, which is not your problem usually, but it's a problem from all time. They're super funny to watch. Anyway, continue.